Hey guys, welcome back to Roto Renovations, where today we're gonna to learn how to repair this mechanical hot water heater timer. Here we go. All right, so the problem we're experiencing is as the dial goes around and it gets to either the device that turns it on or off, it's just getting stuck there. And I've been told it's because the motor is not strong enough to flip the switch on and off your hot water heater. This is the motor and I'll supply the part number later. Um, we're gonna go ahead and swap it out and then see if that fixes the issue. You'll start by switching off the power and then you can remove the panel that shields the electrical connections on the timer. Next you'll see the two tiny wires on the two terminals coming from your breaker. Those are the wires that are connected to the motor so you'll need to remove those in order to remove the motor. I've been told by the manufacturer that it doesn't matter which wire attaches to each terminal, but I went ahead and marked one of the wires so I could hook up the replacement to be exactly like the original. After removing these screws, the motor's wires will be free, and next you'll need to use a small flathead screwdriver to release the top of the timer so you can pull it forward to unscrew the motor located on the back. The screws on my motor required a star bit. The original motor had a plastic shield over its wires, but the replacement motor was assembled with the mounts on the opposite side, so I wound up leaving it off. The original motor contained gear grease, so I applied some bearing grease I had lying around to the new motor's gear and then reinstalled it. After it's installed, there's a slot on the back of the timer that you can use to hold the motor wires in place as they're routed down and around to the front of the timer. Even though I was told it doesn't matter, I marked the new motor's wire to ensure it was wired exactly like the old motor. Something to note is that the old motor ticked like a clock, and when I first installed this motor, I thought it was broken because it was silent. But maybe that's how the original should have sounded all along. Once the wires are installed, you can properly seat the timer in the housing by feeding the bottom end in first behind the tabs built into the side of the box and then push the top portion of the timer up until it latches behind the top clip. Then you can install the supplied shield that helps cover the exposed wires. You wanna make sure that this is positioned where it can actually stick through this hole and because sometimes it'll get a little bent whenever you're working on everything. So just make sure it freely goes back and forth and it's not really touching the case at all. All right, now you can turn your power back on. All right, our timer's working properly now that we switched out the motor. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, comment below. If you like it, like it. Please subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace and God bless.